Hallo Deutschlerner! This is my fourth and final video about German conjunctions. I've already explained coordinating, subordinating, and two-part conjunctions, which are all linked down below. Today I will teach you how to use German adverbial conjunctions, things like also, dann, trotzdem, jedoch, and a whole lot more. These conjunctions are also known by several other names, including Conjunction adverbs, conjunctional adverbs, conjunctional adverbien, conjunctive adverbs, and conjunctivitis. Okay, that last one is the scientific name for pink eye, but the rest of those were real things that people are calling these online. I call them adverbial conjunctions for consistency purposes, but the other names work too. If you want to skip ahead to a particular conjunction, you can find timestamps linked down below. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. If you want to be awesome like these people and support this YouTube channel, you can do so via the link down below where it says join. There you can become a channel member on this YouTube channel. Or if you prefer, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. L Antrim. By becoming either a channel member or a supporter on Patreon, you get access to worksheets, MP3 downloads, and more. First, as we did with the other lessons about conjunctions, we have to define what adverbial conjunctions even are. Bad definition first, they are adverbs that act like conjunctions. That isn't terribly helpful, so let's try something else. I would say they are words that are usually considered adverbs, which are words that modify basically anything in the sentence except a noun, but they are used to connect words, phrases, or clauses, like conjunctions do. For example, trotzdem is usually considered an adverb, but it means however or nevertheless, and therefore could be used as a conjunction. Let's see some examples. Seine Mutter ist sehr gemein. Er ist trotzdem ganz nett. His mother is very mean. He is very nice, however. In this sentence, trotzdem simply modifies the other adverbs, ganz and nett. It's kind of showing the manner in which he is being nice. This can be combined into two sentences, using trotzdem as a conjunction for the glue to hold them together. Seine Mutter ist sehr gemein, trotzdem ist er ganz nett. His mother is very mean, however he is quite nice. The thing you need to pay attention to is the word order after the conjunction. With the coordinating conjunctions, the word order was not affected at all. This would put the verb after er, but that isn't what happened here. Subordinating conjunctions would require you to move the verb to the end of the sentence or the end of the clause, which is also not what happened here. We simply started the clause with trotzdem and moved our subject er to the other side of the verb, ist. This is the same thing that happens if you start any sentence with any other adverb. The most common way to do this is to start with the time element at the beginning of the sentence and then move the subject to the other side of the verb. For example, Ich gehe heute ins Kino. I am going to the movie theater today. Heute gehe ich ins Kino. Today I am going to the movie theater. So adverbs can be placed at the beginning of a sentence or at the beginning of a clause and move the subject to the other side of the verb. Some of these adverbs can be used as conjunctions as they connect one clause to another. This is what we call adverbial conjunctions. Let's get into the list. There are a ton of adverbs that can be used to connect clauses to each other but there are only a handful of them that are actually used in everyday conversations. I'm going to focus on the ones that are actually used in normal conversations in German, and then at the end I'll show you a big list of the other ones and how they are used. There are five main adverbs that basically mean therefore, that's why, or hence. They are daher, darum, deshalb, deswegen, and somit. Each of them have their own subtleties and differences, however. I could spend an entire video talking about the differences between the whys, wieso, weshalb, warum, and their answers, but this video already has enough going on in it without diving into the deep end of that. Instead, I'll try and explain them in a broader sense, but don't take this explanation as the only thing you need to know in order to master these words, as that is not the case. Daher is like saying from that, or hence, or as a result. It shows the origin of the event. For example, Der Schüler hat nichts gelernt, daher hat er die Prüfung nicht bestanden. The student didn't learn anything, or study. As a result, he didn't pass the test. Ich trinke jeden Tag vier Liter Wasser, daher muss ich oft auf die Toilette. 
I drink four liters of water every day. Hence, I have to go to the bathroom a lot. Darum is similar to daher in that it could be translated as because, but darum carries with it the connotation of around that or about that. Sein Hund ist gestorben. Darum ist er traurig. His dog died. That's why he's sad. Die Studentin liest jeden Tag zwei Bücher. Darum ist sie sehr klug. The student reads two books every day. That's why she is very smart. Deshalb and deswegen are difficult to tell apart. If you can reword the sentence to include the preposition wegen instead of the adverbial conjunction deswegen, you can probably use deshalb or deswegen. Ich bin mit dem Auto meines Vaters gegen einen Baum gefahren. Deswegen darf ich sein Auto nicht mehr fahren. I drove my father's car into a tree, so I am not allowed to drive his car anymore. Wegen des Unfalls darf ich sein Auto nicht mehr fahren. Because of the accident, I am not allowed to drive his car anymore. Deswegen darf ich es nicht fahren. That's why I'm not allowed to drive it. The last one on my list of similar meanings is the furthest removed from the others. Somit indicates that something was done in order to accomplish something else. It is similar in that it shows the cause of the action, but it could be translated as so that or in order to. It's important to note that so mit is used in a main clause or Hauptsatz, but there's also so das, which has a similar meaning, but is a subordinating conjunction and therefore uses a subordinate clause. Here are some examples of so mit. Die Nix haben noch einmal verloren. Somit erreichen sie dieses Jahr die Playoffs nicht. The Knicks lost again, hence they missed the playoffs again. Sam hat die meisten Punkte, somit hat sie gewonnen. Sam has the most points, with that she won. There are a few ways to say however or nonetheless in German. I talked about one in my coordinating conjunction video, doch. There are two others that I want to talk about today, allerdings and trotzdem. Allerdings is more of a feeling of all things considered or however, while trotzdem is more like in spite of that. The difference is subtle, but the main point is that trotzdem feels stronger than allerdings. Here are a few examples of them. Die Reise durch Deutschland war anstrengend, allerdings war sie auch sehr schön. The trip through Germany was exhausting or demanding, nonetheless it was very beautiful. Die Interesse der Schüler schwindet. Allerdings ist das nicht außergewöhnlich, da es schon 14 Uhr ist. The interest of the students is waning. However, this is not out of the ordinary, as it is already 2 p.m. Mein Bruder hat schon zu Abend gegessen. Trotzdem möchte er mit uns essen gehen. My brother already ate dinner. In spite of that, he would like to go to dinner with us. Das Wasser ist grün. Trotzdem schwimmt sie. The water is green. In spite of that, she is swimming. The most common and most widely used way to say in addition to or likewise in German is außerdem. The preposition außer means besides. When you add dem to the end of it, it's like saying besides that or in addition to that. With this in mind, you can use this as a conjunction. Here are a few examples of that. Diese Schuhe sind zu klein. Außerdem fallen sie auseinander. These shoes are too small. Besides that, they are falling apart. Ich möchte noch nicht essen. Außerdem mag ich keinen Fisch. I would not like to eat yet. Besides that, I don't like fish. If you would like to say otherwise in German, sonst is a good option. For example, Der Bär muss keinen Hunger haben. Sonst hätte er dich gefressen. The bear must not be hungry. Otherwise, he would have eaten you. Das erste Schwein musste gefressen werden wollen. Sonst hätte er sein Haus aus Stein gebaut. The first pig must have wanted to get eaten. Otherwise, he would have built his house out of stone. These are nowhere near the entire list of adverbial conjunctions in German. In fact, there are more than 50 of them. In this chart, you can see a list of the different adverbs that can be used as conjunctions. These are separated based on their use. Instead of giving you examples of each one individually, I will simply explain what each category means and what that means for the adverbs in that group. Copulative refers to the fact that something adds to something else in the first clause. 
This is why you see außerdem besides that in that group. Other examples would include weiter, further or furthermore, ebenso, equally or as well as, and darüber hinaus, beyond that. Lokal refers to the location of something. Daneben, for example, would be next to that, but it can also take on a more figurative meaning of that phrase. You'll notice that all of them on this list are da compounds. This is pretty common for a lot of adverbial conjunctions, as da compounds lend themselves to this kind of use very well. For more on da compounds, you can watch the video that I have linked in the description for that. Temporal expresses a time. Da for, for example, means before that, and währenddessen means during that. These are great transitional conjunctions if you're writing an essay or for use on a written part of a German exam. I would highly recommend that you learn how to use all of these well, as they will come in handy. Since they are so helpful, I wrote example sentences for most of them, with the exception of indessen, because it's not very widely used. Meine Hündin riecht die Schildkröte. Davor hat sie keine gesehen. My dog is smelling the turtle. Before that, she hadn't seen one. Meine Mutter geht einkaufen. Währenddessen bleibe ich zu Hause und zocke. My mother is going shopping. During that time, I am staying home and playing video games. Wir haben zusammen zu Abend gegessen. Danach sind wir ins Kino gegangen. We ate dinner together. After that, we went to the movies. Er spricht zuerst mit seiner Familie, anschließend mit seinem Chef. He is speaking with his family first, and after that with his boss. Next up is causa, which as you might guess is the cause of something. They are almost all translated as that's why or because. The most popular ones were mentioned at the beginning of this video. Conditional and consecutive are both used to show a condition. For example, Ich habe auch ein Auto. Notfalls können wir mit ihm fahren. I have a car too. If need be, we can drive with it. Concessive refers to something that precludes another. In other words, this thing happened, but this happened anyway. For example, Der Bürgermeister sagt, wir müssen zu Hause bleiben. Dessen ungeachtet gingen viele Menschen zum Park. The mayor says we have to stay at home. Nevertheless, many people went to the park. In the category Spezifizierend, you can see words that describe the extent to which something is done. The last category is Adversative, meaning that it shows something that is different than the first clause. There are a bunch of these. You will also notice that the two-part conjunction Einerseits and Andererseits is also in this group, and it's not only a two-part conjunction, but also an adverbial conjunction. Here are a few examples from this category. Mein Hund ist sehr faul. Dem gegenüber ist die Katze voller Energie. My dog is very lazy. By contrast, the cat is full of energy. Es gibt viele Nachspeisen auf dem Tisch. Nur darfst du sie nicht haben. There are a lot of desserts on the table, but you aren't allowed to have them. This is my last video about conjunctions, or at least the various categories of them. If you haven't already seen my videos about coordinating, subordinating, and two-part conjunctions, you can see them linked over here in this playlist. If you want to learn more about those DA compounds that I mentioned earlier, you can find those linked over here. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!